Cut. Oh, fucking cut. Now I'm gonna go buy, no, I'm, no, I'm gonna go purchase one. That's the problem. This this ain't for me. Well, I was like, you no, know, the background is mom and dad was addicted to crack cocaine. Okay. Right? All praises to the most high. Hi, how are you? I am Doc Holiday, host of the Doc Holiday Show. I just want to tell you all a little bit about me and a little about about this show. This show is all about uplifting positivity black men black women black teen black royal and let me tell you tell you all a little bit about myself now people in memphis may know who i am they may not but born and raised in memphis tennessee the oldest of eight kids but my mom and dad only had four oldest of my mom's four kids she died in 1985 when i was 11 years old right before my 12th birthday and i have to give my father all the credit because he stepped up as a strong black man and he didn't abandon us he didn't panic all he did is stepped up continued to do what he was doing which was being a great black father and uh raising four of us he ended up being married twice since then so i got uh four uh other siblings from those two unions um Went to Fairley High School, went to Rains Haven Elementary School, went to Lanier. Like I said, if you're not from Memphis, you're not familiar with those schools. But if you're from Memphis, you know how good Rains Haven Elementary was. They tore it down. And Lanier Junior High School was. They changed it. And Fairley High School is. But it ain't the same. But it is the same. But anyway, played football for a long time. Had um, all kinds of, you know, major college scholarships to go play football. Chose to go play football at the Memphis State University. It is now the University of Memphis played in the NFL, uh, played professional football for a couple of years, ended up coming back, getting my degree from Memphis State. That's why I tell young Royals, especially young athletes, your education, is, when you're in school and they're paying you, really, really paying you with education for you to play sports, please take care of your business. Don't just let them use your body and don't just don't be dumb like that because I was young and dumb. Did a lot of young and dumb things. That's why I wanted to bring this platform here. Uh, more than 20 years of experience on TV and, and, and radio news. Uh, I've been any, anything from a production assistant. And I tell people when I, I, I came back from playing professional football, NFL, then the CFL, came back to Memphis, I had to get my degree. And now my senior year at Memphis State, I already had three kids. My wife and I, we now have, we have three, but she and I weren't married at the time. But I was my senior year playing football at Memphis State University. I had I already had three kids. So coming back from that, coming back from playing professional football, I didn't take care of my business, didn't get my degree then. So when I came back from Canada, came back home to Whitehaven, people that know that, because that's where I'm from, we call it Blackhaven. People know from Whitehaven to the University of Memphis is a long, long way, but I came back like, huh, okay, what am, what am I going to do? Depressed, came back, didn't have, my, uh, a car was broken down, had kids to take care of, uh, wanted to get go back to school and get my degree in broadcasting because I knew I always wanted to be a sports anchor, sports director here, here in my hometown. So I came back, as I said, I, I was broke, didn't have no car, Got back in school, so for the first time ever, I had to catch the bus. Extremely humbling. I, I mean, I didn't know anything about catching the bus, getting bus passes and transfers. I didn't know anything about that. And I'm walking. And I still remember I'm walking to the bus stop a couple of times from Whitehaven, trying to go to school. And I'm seeing dudes. They know me. They wondering like, why the hell, Doc, walking? He getting on the bus. But extremely humbling. I mean. That was a, a, a state of depression I went through, but I didn't have time to stay there because, as I said, I had kids to take care of. So I caught the bus as long as I needed to, found my first job in television as a production assistant, making $7 an hour, only getting 20 hours a week. Now, I done came back from playing professional football. I didn't got back in school. My first TV job. Production assistant, in-studio cameras, audio board, Chiron, $7 an hour, 20 hours a week, catching the bus to school, staying up late, sometimes staying up, staying at the University of Memphis at 2 or 2.30 in the morning, studying, then got to try to find a way back to my wife's house in Whitehaven. She was my girlfriend at the time, but we didn't end up getting married in 98, but she had bought a house for her mom and her family to move them in, so I was living with, with her, a house she bought. So I'm trying to find my way back to Whitehaven at 2, 3 in the morning sometime. And a lot of times I had to walk. Now, people know how long that is. I had to walk. But I knew I had to try to make it through all of that because I was the reason I was in that situation. 
Like, I came from a great home. The fact that my mom died at such a young age, it, it still affects me to this day. I had a lot of anger, fighting all the time, making mistakes because we all make mistakes, drinking and driving, getting arrested, resisting, uh, resisting arrest, just tearing up people's club, just being a monster on the town. And it all became, it was all because of depression. That's what the anger was from. Because I thought I was going to have a 10, 15 year career in the NFL. Didn't work out like that. Probably could have, but I went to the CFL and for the first time ever, I quit something. I quit. I don't know. Yeah, first time ever I quit because I didn't have some jobs. I didn't quit since then. First time ever I quit something. Quit the CFL twice. Hamilton Tiger Cats. Quit them the first time because my money wasn't right. First couple of games, they paid me five, six thousand dollars. Next game, they, next week I didn't know, put me on a practice squad. Practice squad make about three or four hundred dollars. Because in CFL at the time, you can only dress so many Americans. I didn't realize that when I signed and go up there. So I'm like, man, you put me on a practice squad, you put this Canadian dude up there, he's sorry. But I didn't realize that, but my mind wasn't mature enough, so I quit. they like, we're going to make it right the next week. A couple of weeks later, they do the same thing, so I quit again. But I had all these vets calling me, coming down there to talk to me, like, look, bro, don't quit, dog. We all have to go through it, but my ego was so out of control. And I tell people that, especially young people, now your ego can get you in all kinds of trouble because the ego don't know a damn thing. Ego does not know a damn thing. So they was like, okay. I finally said, man, y'all just sent me back to the house. I didn't listen to anybody. I didn't listen to any other advice. So they sent me back home. So that's how I came back home. Broke. Car broken down. But what they did tell me, they was like, well, you're not going to be able to play for anybody else because you signed a two-year contract with us. So I was like, okay, fine. I'm thinking I ain't going to be able to play for another CFL team. Like, no. Because I had the Eagles. The, I had a couple of teams wanting to work me out and wanted to sign me. But they was like, no, nah, you still on a contract with us for two years. So that forced me, like, okay, let me go ahead on back, go to schooling, and start my career in sports broadcasting because I got these kids to take care of. So I did that. Production assistant, I've been an editor, news photographer. News, I mean, I, all this working my butt off. And I had a job at FedEx. People, if you're from Memphis, if you ain't never worked at FedEx, you my age, I, you, you, you lucky because everybody done worked at FedEx. So I'm working two jobs, and I'm going to school, and I'm trying to take care of these kids. You're talking about being depressed and down, but. I decided to start this show because of my expertise. As I say, I have more than 20 years, nearly 25 years in the television and radio business. I've been an editor, producer, videographer, sports producer, just working my way up and realizing that we have to outwork everybody. I have to outwork everybody. But I've had a couple of those TV jobs I was fired from because, to be honest, I didn't even know how to be an employee. I was used to everything being given to me. The world revolving around me, I thought in my head because I was a superstar athlete. So I didn't know how to be an employee. So I got fired from a couple of jobs. So you're talking about even more depression coming up, being fired. Now your kids looking at you because they don't, you know, they're young. They don't want to hear that. And you ain't trying to tell them because you got to find a way to feed them. You got to find a way to take care of them. So for months after I got fired from one of them jobs, you know, I'm, I'm all locked up in my room. My wife, was she was concerned about me. And rightfully so, because I was in a deep, dark spot, man. Deep, dark spot, because I didn't know what, what to do. I didn't know where to turn. I had re never really faced failure before. But getting fired from those jobs and being put in those situations, what I did, I said, you know what? You got to keep it pushing. Because hard times come, man. You got to keep it pushing. But even during that time, I was still doing a lot of drinking, fighting, going to the clubs here in Memphis and just tearing stuff up, man, just reckless. People were concerned about me. People didn't even like to see me coming. Friends, which I understand. I really, really understand because I was that dude. When I come, I'm finna change the whole mood of, of, of the room. Everybody finna get tense because I'm looking for an altercation. And I had to grow from that. Go through all of that and grow for that. And I'm glad. I thank all praises to the Most High for taking me through that. And I have grown for that. And I recently left a job where I was a sports director for a TV station here in Memphis, Tennessee. And I can tell you, my sports department was, you know, it, it, it was the best in Memphis. Number one, ratings. As far as the sports concerned, we're doing all kinds of content. But all while I was doing that job, grossly, grossly underpaid. And I tell these people, when I started at a, uh, I ain't going to say the name of the station because I don't even want to give them no props. But when I, when I got there in 2011, it wasn't as a sports anchor. Even though my background was in sports, I had to go in and get the job as a news reporter. I had never done news before. But I knew I wanted to get my foot back in the business because before then I had worked three years at, at Douglas High School teaching media concepts. And I want to tell this because this is how the most high works. This is how God works. 
How I got that job at Douglas High School, I came back to Memphis. I got a job with the city of Memphis. I was working with that being, you know, uh, doing videos from them, but it was a temporary job. So that job was up. So I needed a job. So I said, you know what? I'll be a substitute teacher. I thought I'd be a substitute teacher. So I applied to be a substitute teacher. So I go to the orientation to be a substitute teacher. So what they in there, they saying your GPA got to be a 2.8. And I'm knowing that once I graduated, because once I came back and went back to school, oh, I was straight A's because I was smart. But when I was in school, I wasn't trying to go to class. I just wanted to play football. But when I came back, straight A's, just ace in every class. But I'm sitting in there. I'm like, man, they just said you got to have a 2.8 GPA to be a substitute. Now, I'm prideful. Room full of people. I'm like, man, I'm just going to wait until my lunch break before I walk away and leave and go around the corner for my wife to pick me up. Because at that time, I ain't had no car. My car was broken down. It was broken down then. But my wife had a truck. So some said, no, swallow your pride, get up and leave right now. Because I knew if I got up and left, everybody would know that I didn't have a GPA. And they know who I am. So it was embarrassing and it was humbling. But something said, no, get up and leave, walk around to the Board of Education. For people who don't know, that's about a half a mile from where I was at the uh, uh, Memphis City Schools at the time, TV station. Wait on her to pick you up. So I go around there. I'm sitting in front of the Board of Education. I'm just sitting there. Lady walks by. Just so happens to walk by. She just looks at me. You look like you know how to write. I'm like, yeah, I know how to write. So she's like, follow me. She's like, oh, come on, I I got a job Uh, I'm, I'm trying to interview for. Follow me upstairs. Just like that now. That's why, that's why my, one of my main things is trust God's process. So I'm like, okay. My wife hadn't gotten there yet, so I go up there and talk to her briefly. She was like, yeah, I got a job to be a communications assistant manager, whatever it was. I'm like, okay, I applied for it, and I came in for an interview, interviewed. But then what happened, she called me back. I didn't get that job, but she put me on speakerphone with a principal. The school calls Douglas. Douglas High School was reopening. Legendary school, historic school, prior to North Memphis, where it's from. So she wants me to be a media broadcast teacher now. Now, my GPA was too low to be a substitute. But the most high made me an actual teacher. So back right then, I said, I'm just going to trust your process. So once I finish that, get the job at the TV station as a news reporter. I'm doing a news reporter. really want to do sports. Unfortunately, you know, something, ha- something happened to this main sports guy. You know, my, my guy, he, he, he passed away. Great guy. So now they got a sport, an opening for his main sports anchor. I'm still doing news now. So they come and tell me, you know, you're gonna, you know, I interview for the job. Oh, okay, you're gonna be our, you're gonna be our sports anchor. That's what they tell me. About two weeks later, this news director come in. This how they don't, you know, that's how they don't, they don't be caring nothing about you. Just casually say, well, right, yeah, doc, we hiring somebody else to do sports. You still gonna do news uh two days a week. You're gonna do sports three days a week. Just that on that. Like just two weeks per, uh, earlier told me I was gonna uh, that was my job. So not just casually came in and said, yeah, we hiring somebody else to do that. You're going to do then. So, of course, I'm upset, but I'm still being a professional because I know, you know, you're an angry black man. They already think we angry anyway. If we ain't talking, we angry. If we are talking, we angry. You being nosy. So, of course, I just kept doing my job. I was pissed off, but I told the most high, I said, you know what? I'm just going to trust your process. So a little while after that, I'm not talking. That's how, that's how she was treating me, the news director now. She sees me one, and I, you know, I ain't really speaking. She just stops me, talking bad to me now. Well, you had like you got attitude. You look like you angry about something. If you're mad about it, we'll just make you do news five days a week and just take you out of sports altogether. Now, check this out. Now, they went from telling me I was going to be the sports person to hire to to filling two sports positions over me while I was there. So when we move into a new building, I'm sitting out with the rest of the news people. And the sports department got their own little cubby hole, and it's just. Two new dudes in there. And I'm sitting on the outside looking in, but I had I told the most high I was going to trust this process, and I did. I was mad, but I kept doing my job, outworking everybody. That's how we're supposed to do. So a year later, you know, they come back and apologize, so they make the mistake. Made me sports director, but if anybody know anything about TV news, it was they, they only paid me $52,000 to be the sports director in the market in Memphis when other sports anchors making one twenty, one thirty. That's the money they offer me. So me knowing, okay, once again, I got to prove myself. We got to outwork everybody. We're going to be underpaid. I took it. Worked my butt off. And how the most high works, he sends a new general manager in. He comes in like, why come Doc ain't on sports five days a week? Because the person they hired to do sports 
for me couldn't you know uh, uh over me he couldn't edit and do nothing to camera so even though i was sports director i was still doing all that stuff and i had to leave him on five days a week because he couldn't do any of that other stuff but he comes in we're gonna make doc sports sports director what well, doc why you ain't on tv so i'll do that and just just give me free reign i sign i'm balling out Get a raise, get two huge raises, but still grossly underpaid and not working everybody. I tell people I'm working 12 hours a day, sometimes six days a week, doing twice as many sports every week than anybody else because I was hosting all kinds of high school sports shows while I was uplifting positivity, young black people, because that's what I was all about. I was doing two of those a week, doing a Grizzly show, and I was producing these things and shooting and writing and editing and hosting. I was doing all these things. And still wasn't getting paid close to what the other two top dudes in the city was getting paid, even though r- rankings say that my sports department and my sports ranking were, were the best. Still getting underpaid. But, you know, I, I wasn't tripping. I wasn't tripping because I was making good money, but still grossly underpaid. And I tell people the reason why I left, this is why I left, because my, p- my, p- my performance reviews, excellent. Excellent, because I understand that we have to outwork everybody. Ain't no excuses. We're not going to get paid the same. We're not going to get treated the same. And we have to outwork everyone. And I was never a tap dancing dude. That ain't me. That ain't going to ever be me. But I was I was serious. I was about my work 12 hours a day, regularly, six days a week, regularly doing all these shows and still being grossly underpaid. And I wasn't tripping about it. So when my contract is up last year, I'm thinking because my performance reviews, all of them were great. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm finna negotiate for, you know, I'm, I probably ain't going to have to negotiate because they just going to give me a raise. Nah. Not only did they say they weren't going to give me a raise, they were going to cut my staff in half because I, I I had three people working under me. And I'm I'm the brother. I was a sports director, but I had three white people working under me. And I'm just going to keep it real. One was a white woman, so I knew I had to be on eggshells. And, of course, they were talking about me, talking to other sports people. He's the worst I ever worked with when I really was, was about as lenient because I knew I'm the supervisor. I ain't really the supervisor because they're going to all stick together. And that's what it was. But contract is up. I'm extremely popular, you know, trying to do some great things, uh, working my butt off. So they're like, nah, not only are you not getting a raise, uh, we cutting it. We 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 cutting it. We cutting your department, and you got to do more. And, and you got to do even more work. Oh, okay. Not only that, told me they was gonna put me on a on a performance improvement plan. A performance improvement plan. Check this out. This is what this is what she told me. And I say, as white lady news director, I mean, it is what it is. She was she she was racist, and you can't explain that to to other people unless they melanated, because that's the stuff we have to deal with said that people can't understand me on the air. Now, my, my, my performance review was just great for the last four or five years since I got the job. None of that was in there. But now it's time to give me a raise. You're going to put me on a performance improvement plan? Really? That's how y'all going to do it? When I done made them, I don't know how many money, how, how many, a, a, a crazy amount of money because I done been on sales call where the GM took me and sponsors was buying stuff. Like, oh, Doc Holiday guys, I'm, I'm with that. Because I worked my butt off and I always kept a good name. But no, you're going to tell me, you're going to put me on a performance improvement plan. They're going to give me a raise. I said, okay. So I decided to leave. And that's why I left. So then I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to start my own business, which I did. 12 Tribes LLC, voiceovers, you know, commercials, pop, just an entertainment. And this opportunity presents itself. And I'm going to wrap it up saying this is why I'm choosing to do the Doc Holiday show. Because we need positive images of us. We need to control this because what we're getting on mainstream TV and social media, that's a figment of people's imagination. That is not reality. They'll try to tell you that well, television just mirrors reality. No, television creates reality. That's what it does. That's why it's called TV programming, radio programming. They program us to how they want us to act, how they see us. And when I look at TV, I don't even watch it anymore because I don't see me. I don't see us. I don't see an accurate representation of us. What that means, hardworking black man, hardworking uh, black woman trying to make it, struggling, but still making it and persevering when the whole world is against you. 
Not only is the whole world against us, we be against one another. But I'm, I'm okay with that because I'm going to love us regardless. So what we need and what I'm attempting to give, me and my guy Cassius McGowan, ISF Productions coming together to give some positive images of black men, black women, black teen, black kid, black royalty because we need it, because we don't get it. When you see us on TV, we're going to be rappers or entertainers. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but we're much more than that. Women get, we get TV roles, we're going to be strippers or something like that. Come on, man. And if it shows about us, we're going to be drug dealers or thugs or criminals. That's what we get. That's all we get. And I know that's not all we are. I'm tired of looking at it. And BET ain't BET no more. So my vision is to start a new BET. This Doc Holiday YouTube show, it's about, you know, it's about interviews. It's going to be interviews, sports commentary, but it's really going to be about shining a positive light on us because we need it. We need it. We need to see something else. Our young royals need to see something else because the television and music is programming them to act the way they act. They don't know about Henrietta Lacks. They don't know about all these great black inventors. They don't know about them because they're not showing us that. They don't show us that. They don't show us all the things that blacks have invented and created and has been stolen from us. They don't show us all the great things that we do. They just show us this trash. So hopefully this show will shine us in a positive light. It's all about the uplift of me, you, the Melanation. And I hope you all support it because, you know, it's, it's coming from the heart. Me and my guy Cassius McGowan hooking up to make this show. And trust me, it's going to expand larger than this because it's going to be an entertainment explosion. So we're going to bring you all compelling interviews. And sometimes it's just going to be commentary with me here talking, babbling, going on and on. And we're going to try to expand it to get some entertainment. We're going to have fun, but it's all about positivity, great conversations and, you know, black businesses, supporting black businesses and entrepreneurs, but not even just that, you know, brothers and sisters, regular brothers and sisters, everyday brothers and sisters who are going through struggles and who persevere regardless. So that's what I'm talking about. That's what the Doc Holiday show is about. That's what I'm about in a, in a nutshell. So thank you all for watching. I hope you all tune in every time we drop an episode. And remember, you always got to like and subscribe because of those analytics and plus like and subscribe so you'll know when we drop a new video because at first I was like, okay, it's going to be you know, once a week now, nah, it's going to be probably more than once a week. Sometimes it may be three, four shows a week. It all depends on how me and uh, Mr. Uh, Cassius McGowan want to get down and bring it to you all. But I thank you all. I appreciate you all support because the support right now has been overwhelming. And I'm recording this. We had not even dropped the episode yet. So it ain't nothing but love. And y'all ain't going to get nothing but love from me. Black man, black woman, black teen, black child. So this is the Doc Holiday show. This is officially the first episode, but it's not. It's like an introduction. I want y'all to know who I am because I'm sitting here asking people tell them, to tell me about their lives. So I just want to tell y'all a little bit about my life. And oh, let me, oh yeah, Mary, my wife, my beautiful wife, Yatasha, my four great kids, Marshana, Jalen, Marcus II, and McKenzie. Amazing. Black royalty, man, because you all are black royalty. We all black royalty, but I'm Doc Holiday. Tune in. Like and subscribe because the Doc Holiday show, we're going to bring you some positivity. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Appreciate you.